today I am going to talk about the SNOT tool, which is an open source intuition detection system tool. SNOT has the ability to perform uh, real-time traffic analysis on the network. SNOT, uh, uh, SNOT can perform pro uh, protocol analysis, content matching, con content searching, and many things. Uh, it can also be used to detect probes or attacks, such as denial of service attacks or distributed denial of service attacks, port scan, etc. So you can use SNOT in your in your network so that it keeps an eye on the net, so so that it keeps an eye on the traffic and generates an alarm when there is an unusual activity in your network. Uh, where should typically SNOT should be deployed? This is your internal network over here, which is connected to the firewall, then to the switch, then to the router, and then to the internet. So where should be the SNOT deployed? Because SNOT has to SNOT has to perform real time traffic analysis. It means that it should be able to capture all the traffic that is flowing into the network. So the typical, uh, so the ideal place to in install SNOT is at the switched level with a mirrored port over here. Because all the traffic flows through the switch into the, all the incoming and outcoming traffic flows through the switch into the network. So we have to just uh, mirror the port at the switch and uh, connect and install the SNOT on that, uh, on that port. I have a uh, video of the SNOT where uh, it does, uh, where it involves how to write uh, rules and then uh, about the SNOT report. So uh, we are going to run SNOT through a command line. So, uh, here we have to specify this command for running uh, the SNOT. The, the information about how to run the SNOT and install the SNOT is available on their website. There is one PDF they have provided and all information is given in it. So uh, we have to run the SNOT using this command, and I'm going to run. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to run it in the verbose mode. Um, verbose mode means it is going to capture all the traffic uh, that is originating or coming into my system, and then display it on the uh, command prompt. So it is now running. SNOT is running. Uh, so as you can see, uh, there are many packets that you can see on the console. So as you can see, there is a UDP, there is a UDP packet, and it has many uh, information about the header, such as TTL, time to live, length, etc. And uh, it also shows many information, such as uh, the total packets that were processed. It also shows that the uh, alerts that were generated during this session, during when the SNOT was running. So right now, the alerts that were generated are zero because we haven't written any rule or something that will uh, that will make us not to generate an alert. So right now there are zero zero alerts, and uh, it also shows the total TCP sessions and uh, UDP sessions. So UDP sessions are 42 and TCP sessions are zero. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is a simple interface provided by the SNOT, SNOT report here. Uh, this interface is just, uh, th this interface can, can be used by the user to view the alerts that are generated by the SNOT when it is running. So basically when uh, the SNOT generates an alert, it writes into the database and this interface, uh, this application uh, reads that data from the database and uh, sh uh, shows, uh, shows here. Now we are, now we will see how to write a rule in the snort. Uh, suppose I want to capture all all the UDP traffic that is originating from my system, and then I want to be alerted. Means I want to just see that these are the UDP pack packets that were uh, originated from my system. So for that we have to first write a rule and then run a snort. So let's see how to write a rule. So uh, there is one local dot rules file that is provided by the snort. There you can write your own rules as you want, and then uh, run this one. Uh, first of all, what I said was I want to write a rule that will capture all the uh, that will capture all the UDP traffic that was originated from my system, and then uh, alert it into and uh, generate an alert for for it. So the rule can be written as since I want to be alerted when there is a UDP traffic that is to be generated, th that is going to be generated, I write alert. Okay. Then you have to specify 
the destination, uh, the source source address, source IP address, that is home network. And you have to specify the port from where this UDP traffic is originating. And you have to specify then the destination of the IP address. Then it can be any and any port. Here, I am saying that I want to be alerted when there is, oh, you have to even specify the uh, protocol uh, that you want to uh, capture. So in this case, since you want to capture UDP packets and you want to be get alerted, you, you should specify UDP and then this is the source IP address from where it is originating and this is the so host on the source, uh, sorry, port, port on the host. Yeah. This is the destination IP address. By any means, any IP address. Uh, UDP traffic from my system to any IP address. And destined to any port. So, alert UDP home network any to any any. This, uh, this is the uh, rule header. The rule in this not consist of two parts, rule header and rule options. So what we have written over here is, this is the rule header. After rule header, we have to write the rule options. So uh, you have to write the rule options in angular brackets, uh, yeah, round brackets. So message UDP traffic generated SID, SID means identifier that will uniquely identify that rule. And then the, its revision number. So I will explain this part. This part is the uh, rules, rule option. Okay. Here I have said that message UDP traffic generated. It means that when uh, this, uh, this uh, conditions match, I will get a message UDP traffic is generated and uh, SID means uh, identifier of this rule which will uniquely identify this rule and revision means just this revision first one. Uh, so uh, this is what the rule I have written over there and after writing this rule we will run the snort again and let us see whether the snort is able to cap, uh, whether it is able to capture that UDP traffic and uh, show it on the snort report. So I'm going to run the snort again. And uh, snort is running and then I just visit some random website, Google, Gmail, Yahoo.com. and then I just stop the snort. Then I look at the alerts that were generated by the snort. 48 alerts were generated and 48 alerts were logged. So let's see whether they were logged into the snort report or not. So as you can see, there is a chart over there and it specifies uh, how many alerts were generated for the TCP, UDP, ICMP, port scan. I think it is very uh, small to, to be visible for you. Uh, it says that 48 UDP alerts were generated and it also uh, provides the information about it, about the alert over here, details by signature, uh, over here this one and if you click on the summary, it will give the information of the source IP address and the destination IP address of this UDP traffic. Now suppose I want to write a rule that will detect a particular uh, syn flood attack. So what is a syn flood, syn flood attack? A syn flood attack is a uh, attack in which the attacker generates too many TCP requests with the syn flag set to 1 and these requests are then sent to the server. 
So, this is what the Sinclair attack. So, I am going to write a rule that will detect this Sinclair attack. So, I want to be alerted when there is a possibility of Sinclair attack. So, alert TCP because TCP sin uh, packets are sent from any IP address and any port to my home network and port 80. Port 80 because uh, right now my system is acting like a server and uh, some another attacker is performing uh, sin flood attack on it. So, I am listening on port 80 and message possible sin flood Now, we will specify the conditions that will identify this sin flood attack. In sin flood attack, the synchronous, the sin flag is set to 1. So, here you can specify that. You have to specify flags and you have to specify which flags are set to 1. In this case, I will specify S because S, S, will, S means sin flag and you have to specify only those flags which are set to 1. So, in this case flags S and then I am applying a detection filter track by source means look at a specific source, a specific IP address count 20 seconds 60. So, what this specifies is detection filter track by source count 20 and uh, seconds 60. It says that if from the same IP address I get 20 or more packets within the duration of 60 seconds then you should alert me and then just specify the SID that will uniquely identify that rule and revision 1. So, have you understand this rule? I will explain again. Alert when there is a TCP packet from any source and any port to my home network on port 80 okay, such that sin flag is set to 1 and detection filter that is if from the same IP address I get 20 or more packets within the duration of 60 seconds then alert me. Okay. So, this is the rule that I have written in that local dot rules file. Uh, now, I will again run the snort. So, so, right now the snort is running on my system. And then we sent many, too many TCP packets with the synchronization flag set to one from another system to my system. And I just checked that whether it is able to detect it or not. Okay. Uh, so, while the uh, snort was running, we, we kept sending to uh, TCP sync packets to my system. And then after some time, I will just abort the snort. Now, if the snort sees that the TCP packets are originating from a particular source IP address with the sync flag, sync flag set and at a rate of 20 or more packets per minute, then it will raise an alarm uh, because it is an onset of sync flood attack. So, and then we can see it in the snort report. It has generated a, a report where it says that uh, for the specific SID that I had mentioned, SID unique identifier of the rule, it has generated a 323 alerts. Yeah, this 323. You can see more information in the summary. So, as you can see, it is specifying the sources that has triggered that has triggered this attack signature and the destination that has received this attack signature. So, the source that has attacked this, uh, uh, that has, that was triggering this attack signature was the system that was sending the uh, TCP packets. 
and the destination was my system. So it says that there, there were total 380 alerts that were generated. Uh, we'll talk more about Snort because we are running out of time. We'll talk more about Snort in the context of Metasploit, which will be done tomorrow afternoon. So tomorrow there are no lecture sessions. There are only two labs, one lab in the morning on forensics, etc., and one lab in the afternoon. Okay, so we'll see you tomorrow.